everyone, and welcome to the latest B-Movie Theater. And today, I will be talking about... The, today, I'll be talking, actually, with a double feature. The first up is the 1959 horror movie co-produced between both the U.S. and Japan. The film known as The Manster. Or Dr. Satan, as it was known in Greece and in other parts of the globe it was known as the split and the two-headed monster and this follows news correspondent Larry Stanford who is working out of Japan the last couple of years much to the disdain of his marriage and his last assignment before returning to his wife to work out his relationship issues, he, he asked to do an interview with a reclusive yet renowned Japanese scientist known as Dr. Robert Suzuki, and who is working atop a volcan who is working atop a volcanic mountain. However, during however, in doing the interview, he talks about the stages of evolution among uh, among people and human beings and animals. He has finally figured out a way to work it out chemically. And so he basically drugs Larry thinking he's a perfect candidate and he injects him with the enzyme. And over time, Larry actually starts to become a monster, growing a <clears throat> growing a second head and terrorizing the Japanese countryside. And this is definitely a great film. It had a very creepy atmosphere, and I highly recommend it to you guys because you got to see this movie to believe it. But anyway, moving on to our next one. All right, we move on to 1986's horror comedy Monster in the Closet. And this was actually a little fun fact. A, a very young Paul Walker and Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas actually, actually were in this movie when they were a lot younger. Like I would say, right around like elementary school age. Little fun fact for you guys. Um, and this was actually made by Troma. Yes, the same company that did Class of Newcomb High and Toxic Avengers, Surf Nazis Must Die, all those movies. And this was actually one of their more laid-back movies. There was only like maybe one or two nude scenes, and there was little to almost no violence. And the movie doesn't really take itself too seriously, as you can tell by looking at the monster. As I described, it looked like a mutant version of Mr. Potato Head had basically screwed the creature from the Black Lagoon while it was on its period. Um... And what, may, and what lends to the absurdity and not-so-seriousness of this movie is that the lead female protagonist and the monster both have the same look whenever this Clark Kinnish-looking, like, schlub that's the main male character takes his glasses off. What the hell is that all about? I guarantee if this went down in real life, it would go something like this. Uh. So, what do you think? Contacts or no contacts? And then, why, why does the monster actually try to take this guy? and bring him back to one of the closets in the city. What, is he going to put him back into the closet and then take off the monster suit and reveal that he's R. Kelly or something? Anyway, anyway guys, that is the double feature for B-Movie Theater. I recommend both Manster and Monster in the Closet. Very fun, campy B-movies. And see you the next time I do B-Movie Theater.